for the possibility to speak today. I hope that the equipment will work. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, firstly, uh, I should speak a little bit about the Moldova in order to have a general understanding about the legal aid system. <coughs> it's a country in southeastern Europe. It used to be a part of the Soviet Union. So a lot of inheritance from there is still in some aspects of the uh, legal life in Moldova. Uh, so uh, even we declared independence in 1991 and there are two main human rights instruments, as I mentioned before, is still something to, to change and to uh, forget from the that types of legalistic approaches. <clears throat> the population of the country is 4.1 million, uh, but in fact we cover uh, legal, our legal aid system only 3.6 million due to the fact that we have a region which is separatist one. So the figures and all uh, about I will mention do, does not relate to the Transnistria region. And the poverty level uh, it's 17.5 percent. Why before? I will say shortly it's about adoption of new law. This doesn't mean before 2008 nothing good were in place, was in place. But uh, it's a kind of uh, point where a lot of things were changed in uh, the legal aid system. So uh, for me it will be easier to present the situation uh, before 2008 as yesterday's Dada Namoradzo already mentioned some of the issues uh, related to the ex officio system. Uh, and uh, mainly which I wanted to stress is about the fact that uh, the lawyers were appointed or called to come to a process by the criminal investigation officer, prosecutor or the judge itself. So uh, this raised a lot of uh, the issues and a lot of things like pocket lawyers, the new uh, concepts we, uh, 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 in, in the system. So it could happen that someone from the, the courtroom was invited to defend someone without any kind of preparation, uh, which is not a relevant practice. And also, uh, uh, this raised the issue not only about the quality, but the, uh, the issue of, about the independence, potential independence, as this lawyer work was confirmed by the criminal investigation officer or prosecutor or the judge itself. So they had to sign after uh, uh, doing the, uh, uh, the job uh, uh, on a paper to, to lawyer that the work was done. With uh, this signature, the lawyer was going to the Ministry of Justice to receive the funds. So we do, will not speak about the quality and about independence of this category of lawyers. Meanwhile, from the perspective of the, um, of the management of the uh, policy formulation, there was no management entity and no data on costs on number of beneficiaries. It's a kind of chaos. Theoretically, everyone was entitled to receive legal aid. Practically, everyone received a formal lawyer without any kind of diligence or quality of services. So, for sure, it's not easy to shift from one approach to another one, especially in a period of time when it was an economical crisis and it was quite difficult to, uh, to uh, promote new institutions and new approaches. Uh, for us, instead, it was easy because uh, at that time, um, so due to the fact that we are part of the Council of Europe and also a neighbor of the European Union, it's a lot of support from uh, uh, outside in order to shift the, uh, the, the approaches in a better way. So you see the players. In 2007, the legal aid law uh, was adopted. Uh, before adoption of, uh, uh, of the law, it was a huge, huge work then, uh, with support of a diversity of partners. The uh, main partner in that uh, process was Soros Foundation Moldova, and but not only the Soros Network. Uh, uh, when I wrote here pilot project, this doesn't mean only trying to provide legal aid, but there's a lot of working groups uh, meeting with stakeholders, uh, external visits, uh, so uh, even trying to strengthen the capacity of the Bar Association to do their job properly. So this means multidimensional, meaning a lot, a huge of work done in order to, uh, to promote uh, this law. One year was left for uh, preparation of implementation of the new legal aid law. So, um, uh, this means technical preparation, but also uh, from, from the interaction point of view, because 
uh, just imagine yesterday the court should appoint a lawyer from the, uh, or ask appointment of a lawyer from the Bar Association and the next day should ask via different procedures. So this means some words in order to make uh, awareness and to make people to understand how they should perform uh, the job. So, now we have the, uh, the new uh, uh, management in the legal aid. The National Council for State Guaranteed Legal Aid is created. Uh, it's a quasi-independent. Uh, a lot of people are saying that our legal aid uh, board is independent. I put every time the, the, the word quasi, and I will explain a little bit why. Uh, the board itself is, is composed of seven members, which are uh, selected and delegated by different institutions. Uh, two members from Ministry of Justice, two from Bar Association, one from Minister of Finances, which is very important in such context to promote and to have sufficient resources, one from Superior Council of Magistrates, <coughs> and the one myself uh, from academia and the NGO sector. So, from one point of view, it's a good platform for discussion, but still some of the competencies and some influences of other stakeholders make me to think it's quasi-independent, not really independent. Um, the Legal Aid Board meets uh, every three months, should meet every three months. In fact, we have meetings every month because a lot of things to establish and to, to, to promote and to decide. Uh, but uh, there is a permanent based uh, administrative apparatus which is preparing both kind of documents for, for examination at the Legal Aid Board and also enforcing the decision of the Legal Aid Board. So we do not have direct contact between Legal Aid Board and territorial offices. So there is an institute, uh, administrative apparatus which is doing, uh, uh, doing this. From the point of view of the mandate, all kinds of decisions uh, are taken by Legal Aid Board, uh, including the, uh, uh, the, the procedure of work, the level of payment for, uh, for, for lawyers, number of lawyers, number of paralegals, number of units in system. So it's a quite large spectrum of competencies to be taken by, uh, of uh, decision to be taken by uh, Legal Aid Board. And uh, uh, another aspect of quasi-independence, we are reporting uh, on annual basis <coughs> on the same date to free institution, to Ministry of Justice, to government and to parliament. So there is no procedure of approval before sending the report from the Ministry of Justice or uh, from the government. But meanwhile, it's uh, uh, this duty established by law to report also to Ministry of Justice and the government. Uh, the territorial offices uh, themselves are five and they are doing everyday job, starting from the receiving requests for, for legal aid and even starting from awareness about the legal aid system and finishing with payment of uh, uh, lawyers for individual uh, uh, for work done in individual cases. Uh, and also we have two institutions with very important role in our legal aid system. Ministry of Justice, uh, general policy formulation in the justice sector. Uh, what is meant by this uh, wording? Um, for example, now we are discussing to offer legal aid for victims of crime, uh, of less serious crimes. So they have an important role in formulation of such kind of, uh, uh, of policies. And also, uh, they are involved uh, strongly in budget promotion. We formulate our budget, but uh, the, the promotion uh, in the, uh, to Minister of Finances is done by Minister of Justice. This is a good and also could be a bad. But uh, for us it's good because uh, the political support is important in such kind of countries as Moldova is. So uh, for when it's good context, then it's good. But when it's a bad people on the bad, uh, good places, then it's bad. So this is why I'm saying uh, good and bad. And also the bar, which is involved seriously in the process of selection of lawyer and also approval of professional standards for, for, for lawyers. Uh, might be during the, 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 the question, uh, ask, uh, question and answer uh, part, I will uh, speak more in detail about types of legal aid. I want to mention that it's a variety and the one is that it's not possible to have a good legal aid system, qualified legal aid, without having a primary legal aid, uh, not only from the, from the uh, cost efficiency point of view, but especially from the point of view of accessibility. Uh, these uh, types are provided by NGO and paralegals and qualified by, um, uh, by um, uh, public defenders and private lawyers. It's a mixed system in order to promote competence between these two categories of, uh, uh, of uh, service providers. Uh, and I want to mention a very important part. You 
could see here from the point of view of, of credibility of the system that number of beneficiaries in five years increased with by seven uh, times. So it's quite huge uh, number. This is about the awareness, but it's also about the, the level of trust in the, the legal uh, aid system. For sure, there is still a, look, a lot to be done. Uh, I'm speaking about the capacity of the system because you see the permanent increase in number of, uh, of beneficiaries. It's not about on the level of poverty, but it's, uh, uh, as I mentioned, about the accessibility and trust in the system. So it's slightly overloaded. Uh, and number of requests every day increasing, increasing, so it's difficult to manage that. Uh, meantime, we try to, um, to promote new solutions like zero life legal aid, meaning using different technologies and uh, uh, public le lectures provided by paralegals and students in order to ensure that minimum uh, information. Uh, also, about the quality insurance mechanism, and uh, it's uh, quite problematic to leave only to the bar, so it's still uh, the need to have uh, external uh, monitoring of the, of the quality. I want to stress about the limited number of lawyers in some areas. This means it's exceptions, one or two areas we have, but meanwhile we included in the law <coughs> possible to appoint every licensed lawyer, and uh, that lawyer is obliged to provide legal aid at the cost of legal aid system. So even not being part of legal aid system, everyone is obliged to provide if we came to such a decision in order to ensure the, the delivery of legal aid. I know it's discussable, but I could discuss it uh, later on. So, and also it's a culture, uh, the issue of culture of defense. As I told, if the lawyers do not understand, do not understand properly their role, so we could speak a, uh, I don't know, a idealistic approach, but nothing about efficiency as as a final uh, result. Um, and also the, the primary legal aid scheme, uh, it's a question to be solved. Where to stop? In every village to have paralegals and you or not? And taking into consideration that, that uh, in, there are a lot of possibilities, technological possibilities to access legal aid system and to uh, obtain legal aid, qualified legal aid uh, uh, provided by lawyers. So this is an issue which we should uh, solve. And you see that we should finish with equal access to justice for all and ensure it not only to contribute. I want to stress that and details can be found on our web page, including in uh, in English and probably for some of our friends also, uh, uh, some materials are also in Russian. So, thank you.